With battle boy, you're paranoid. Trust in the most high, forget the noise. Be serious, don't be so ignorant. Knowledge is power, the force is intelligent. Jesus coming soon, earthquake can shake heavenly. Hey guys, and welcome to War is War. All right, today we're talking to you guys about how I lost my job, but I didn't lose my faith. I lost my job, but I didn't lose my faith. Before we go anywhere, if you're new to the channel, you need to know the motto before we start. You understand? Yeah? War is war. And the captain, the chief, and the commander who I follow into battle is Jesus. And my enemy who I face, I spare no love, no compassion, and no mercy. So that being said, let's get into war is war. All right, cool. So... Many of you might have seen my uh, Instagram post where I was talking about how I lost my job. Um, so I want to kind of tell you a little bit about the story and then break down faith. Because what I really find frustrating in the body of Christ sometimes is the way that we describe faith. Almost as if like if you just put your faith into it, it will happen. For instance, let me give you a situation. Someone might tell you, well, it, uh, the three Hebrew boys, they exercise faith when they're about to be thrown in a fire. What people don't tell you is that they said OK, even if God does not come through, even if the God that we serve does not come through and save us from this fire, we will still believe that was hardcore faith. But many people might promise that with faith, there is going to be a result that you want. No, faith is doing the will of the father. When Christ, went, when Christ was going to the cross in Gethsemane, you remember he was saying, listen, Lord, if this cup come past for me, let it but the cup wasn't going to pass because only he could drink it. So when we're talking about faith, it does not mean that you can wish and grant. You can pray and have faith that you can receive it, but you must also be ready that this may not be the will of the Father. So that being said, let's have a little talk and let me tell you about my story. So this year, even I finally got let go of my job, but I got told about this in November 2019. Yes, I had over six months to find a new job. When you think you have six months to find a job, I don't see how hard it could be for someone who has been employed since they were 17, works in banking, has a degree, um, has a good head on their shoulders, is creative, does YouTube on the side, does leadership things on the side as well. Like my CV is not, it's not, it's not rubbish. You know what I'm saying? Let's be, let's be keep it real. It's not rubbish. Okay, it should be able to get a job. You understand? It should get a job, right? And so when it came November 2019, I was sitting downstairs in my living room. I had my little shorts on as well. I had a little t-shirt on, and I was banging myself behind a computer, chilling and catching a few jokes, right? Um, because I had been forced to take some time off because I was working throughout the whole year and I hadn't taken any time off because I really wanted to try and get to grips with my job. I was a wealth manager uh, where I would have to look after very wealthy clients um, and try to help them with their finances, investments, etc., etc. right? Great job. Even the job I got, how I got the job is a testimony itself. How I came to Birmingham is a testimony itself. But we'll do with that another day. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Okay. So now... I am sitting in my living room and I get a text from one of my colleagues saying, Coach, have you spoke to the manager yet? I'm like, no, no, no. So have you heard? I said, what? Well, no, I haven't heard nothing. And then a manager gives me a call a few moments later. Manager calls me. Me and him are tight. Like, I, I got, you know when you got respect for somebody because the way they handle affairs, different. The way that they deal with you, different. Almost like they are a blessing in disguise. The there were so many lessons I had to learn from him because there were there were faulty characteristics in my behavior, right? In terms of punctuality, you already know, you know what I'm saying, punctuality. Uh, but we had that respect, a mutual respect, man. Do you know what I'm saying? So now he gives me a call and he's telling me, listen, bro, I don't have to break it down to you, bro. Listen, they told us we're not going to have jobs by next year. So imagine this, coronavirus hasn't hit us yet. But the job, the bank I'm in, I'm telling us already, listen, you're going to have your jobs cut. <laughs> well, immediate thought is damn i've got bills to pay damn like raw like my security suddenly gone um fear begins to try and creep in because you're like what do i do well what you don't do is go to the shop and buy a panic roll uh toilet rolls okay like some people were doing during coronavirus but when panic sets in you can start making some really crazy decisions okay so when he told me I was like, oh man, damn, God, you really brought me to Birmingham, especially when I'd, I I, wanted to leave my hometown, but I, I, I mean, how I got to Birmingham was his plan. So I was like, God, really? 
Are you telling me you're going to move me to Birmingham? You're going to move me to Birmingham? And then let me lose my job? Please, please, I don't have any time. You move me to Birmingham to fail? It can never be. It can never be. You understand? And so he said something to me really, really key. He said to me, um, you know what, bro? Don't even worry about it. You know, he said, listen, I don't even... He's like, look, I don't even worry about it, bro. And, 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 and he shouldn't because he's talented. He's going to get another job. He's not me. <laughs> The guy is talented. You know the ones that, bro, you know them kind of people uh, in true we say, why being like you're smart? And I'm not talking about smart in terms of just academic, but the way he do he does things, very organized, very on point, like do you know what I'm saying, right? Um so I I knew he wasn't gonna have no problem. So yeah, he can say God's plan because he's gonna get another job. But for me, I was like, I don't even know I don't I don't even know how I got the job in the first place. I still like for me, I, I the jump for me was huge. Like it was in my rebit, but I never, I never would have applied for it myself had not a friend told me to apply for a job because I thought it was beyond me. You get it? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, but how am I going to find a similar job with a similar amount of pay with the same way that I had that autonomy in my workplace? How am I going to have that? How am I going to find a job like that? Well, how did I find a job in the first place? It's, it's funny, isn't it, how we start thinking about those kind of things. Oh, Lord, how would I find another one like this? Or how would I find better? How did you find it in the first place? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, how did I find that job in the first place? I forgot it was God that did it for me. So he tells me it's a God's plan. And when I heard that, I said, you're right, bro. God's plan. You're right. God's plan. God's plan. And I, when I thought of God's plan, I went to, I remember Galatians 3, verse 11, Message Bible. And when that scripture comes up, let me in fact even read it. Because I think when we're talking about um, when we're talking about uh, the the talking about what God has in store for all of us, it's important to understand that things are on God's plan, not mine. God's plan, and that makes it very scary because you're not in control. But I want to assure you, when you are on God's plan, He has a plan to bring you to the expected place that He wants for you. So let me read Galatians three verse eleven to 12 the obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with god that way the person who lives in right relationship with god does it by embracing what god arranges for him i want to read that again the person who lives in right relationship with god does it by what embracing what god arranges for him doing things for god is the opposite of entering into what god does for you i want you to understand this this walk we're talking about with jesus christ this walk we're talking about with god isn't about what you are doing for god it's about what god wants to do for you do you know how mad that is that we serve a living god that wants to do for you he's not looking for you to do for him that also means as well that he wants you to operate on his blueprint, his plan, his will. So when I lost the job, I had to remind myself very, very quickly so I didn't lose heart that remember how you got here. Remember how you got the job. Remember what brought you to this point. And I don't want to lie as if like, yo, it was instantaneous because my first thought was pay them telephone bills, don't pay the car phone bills. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking, how am I going to pay them bills? real spit right but i did remind myself of the scripture because i knew it um you know I, I, it came to mind at the time right so fast forward january came january came and i went back into the office as well and you know now that everything's kind of winding down everyone's kind of just just chilling because we know we're not getting <laughs> we're not being fired we're getting fired in may everyone's doing interviews as well trying to brush up on their cv trying to brush up on their interview techniques I did a few of those as well just to make sure I'm good. You know, they were telling me, like, I, I showed my CV to some of the bosses. I was like, listen, really good CV. We like it. Da, da, da. I was thinking to myself, bruv, I'm going to get a job within the bank. I must going to get a job in the bank. Plus, I had a couple of dreams about the same bank. So I thought, mm, I'm going to probably get a job in the bank, right? <laughs> January comes, I'm walking in the, I'm walking in the um, office, yeah? As I'm walking into the office, it's so funny. When I hear God, yeah, it's really unique. And this is why the Bible says, there's sheep, they know my voice. And so I want to talk to you quickly about hearing God's voice. Hearing God's voice isn't Morgan Freeman. I will say this, it's not Morgan Freeman. It's not Denzel Washington. It's not even Chadwick Bosman. okay? It is not some random voice that you hear that is going to be odd okay the sheep know my voice what do sheep hear the shepherd's voice who is our shepherd jesus christ 
he's the shepherd, he's the gate. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So when you spend time with the shepherd, you learn to hear his voice as your own. And what I mean by that is that you, you will hear your own voice and you would know distinctively this is God. So when I was walking in the office, I was walking uh, by the tables. It was like a middle kind of parting, like Moses parting the sea. Beautiful. So I was walking down the little middle parting. And as I walked, I had a colleague who, the same one who also helped me get the job, is the same person when I when I was walking, I heard the Lord say, go and speak to Catherine. When you speak to Catherine, talk to her about self-assessment. Now when I heard this, let me let me not 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 lie, blood. Yeah? Let me not lie, blood. I thought to myself, God, are you are you having a cake and a biscuit right here? You understand? What do you mean, like, go and talk to her about self-assessment? Brother, we have six months, five months now. We're in January, we have five months now to find a job, okay? I'm qualified. I've got CV on point. You understand? I'm brushed up on my interview techniques. Brother, we don't need to do self-assessment. We need to get a job, okay? He's like, listen, I need you to go and ask Catherine. The, the, I can only describe it as when, when it is said, the voice was mine and a thought was mine. But I knew instinctively it wasn't me. When I heard that thought, I looked over to Catherine. She didn't look at me, but I looked over to her and I said, Ra, God is up to something. But at the same time, let me be very frank, I'll be, I was behaving like Sarah in the Bible with Abraham and having a kid. I was like, <laughs> me? <laughs> Self-employed <laughs> could never be. Because I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't see myself as being self-employed. I saw myself as being employed. But I also, I'll always be praying every single day for money. Lord, come on, bring, bring, I don't know money per se, but bring an increase, man. The, the amount of money I'm earning is good, but it's not good enough. You know what I'm saying? Life is hard out here. You know what I mean? And inflation is increasing, Lord. You understand? So increase my finances as the inflation is increasing. You get it, right? So how was I, I don't know how I wanted it to happen. I just wanted God to do it. So when God's now giving me a direction, I've got a choice to make. I'm hearing God's voice. What do I do? Right. The same way that Paul heard or saw the vision and heard God's voice and yet no one else saw it. Let me say it again for you. The same way Paul was walking, uh, Paul was on the way to Damascus. Right. And at that moment, a blinding light hits him and says, Paul, why are you kicking against the, is it the rocks or the bricks or against me? Essentially, essentially. Right. And Paul hears a voice distinctively, distinctively. Why is it that he hears it and no one else hears it? I would say this, grace. No, 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 no. I don't want anyone. You can't describe it as anything else because here's the thing. Paul thought he was doing God's work, okay, by killing Christians. I need you to understand this. So when we talk about grace, most people want to limit the grace to what effort you put in. No, grace is really that. It's unmerited. It's unearned favor from the Lord. I am sorry, but if I am God, Paul's not the guy that I'm going to unleash my grace and favor on. Not when you have decided to kill my own people when I'm telling you the message. So why is it that Paul gets the message? And yet the people that were with him merely see a blinding light or hear a blind or hear some kind of voice, but they can't audibly understand what the voice is saying. Right? So when Paul gets blinded and hears the voice of Christ telling him, right, he has been given grace. Out of everybody there who's moving mad, only he was chosen. And so now, Paul is, uh, Saul at the time, is now turned Paul simply by that encounter. But it was God that gave him the ability to be able to even understand it. I, I mean, go and read it again and really deep what's happened here. Why is it Paul can end up killing uh, Stephen or, uh, or uh, helping to, uh, you know, incite a riot to kill Stephen, be on the way to Damascus to come and kill more Christians. And then God decides to blind him, open his eyes spiritually to see that actually he's going the wrong direction and begin to speak to him so he can understand. How is it that God is actually speaking to him? Because he's not, he's not, he's not born again there, is he? He's not born again there, is he? So at that point, God 
has decided that he's going to speak to Paul and give him the ability to understand. Let him who have an ear hear. But the ear must be given, must be given some kind of, uh, I would say, must be, the ear must be prepped to hear this, to understand. Because the ear is the heart. You understand? This is what the Mark 4, the parable of the sower, right? So now Paul hears it, accepts it and goes forward and, and, and becomes a Paul that we know writes the Bible. I said all of this to say, when I was standing there hearing that, I could tell it was God. My spirit was telling me, not my flesh. My spirit just told me that this is God. And, it's, and, and I've had this several times where God speaks through my thought and it's just definitive. I just know it's God. And this is why I said to you, it, you can't describe the feeling. You just know. You cannot describe what happens when God is speaking to you. You just know. Because I used to ask myself this question. I don't know about you guys. You read the Bible and they say the word of the Lord came unto them. And they're like, what the word of the Lord came to them? How do they know it's the word of the Lord? They just know. Because it's not you interpreting it. It's the spirit that's in you. And if you're born again, you have his spirit in you. And the Bible says about how our spirit, and his, uh, our spirit and his spirit testify. They speak to one another, yeah? So the information that's coming from heaven, from God himself, is going to the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you read, I think Romans 5 verse 8 where it talks about how he sheds his love abroad through his Holy Spirit. So the way that we feel his love is through his Holy Spirit. Therefore, communication is coming from his Holy Spirit to my spirit that's been reborn and regenerated. So when I'm hearing God and God is speaking audibly to me, it's because the Holy Spirit at that point has got through to a point that my spirit can pick it up. It's clear. So when I heard you're going to be self-assessing, I may have laughed at the time. I may have laughed the same way Sarah laughed, but I heard just as Sarah heard. And just as Sarah also uh, saw the miracle happen, I too saw the miracle happen. So now obviously... Uh, you know, months are going by, it's it's February, it's March, I've interviewed for different roles and not got it. Some of the roles I interviewed for, I didn't really want to want it, I just wanted a job. I, 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 I didn't even really want to be there per se, like, do you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, and at this time, listen, YouTube is not paying me much, let me be very frank with y'all. YouTube, my little black book channel, is not paying me much at all. Let me be very frank with you. YouTube isn't paying me much at all, okay? They are paying me small, small amounts. You understand, right? And so it's not even viable to even think about going down YouTube's lane. It's not even viable. You understand? I also had just got into a relationship in January. And one of the things that was happening to me at the time was that I was starting to feel a little bit like, brother, how are you, how are you in a relationship and you don't even have finances. Now, when I say I don't have finances, it doesn't mean I don't have savings. I had savings, but listen, it, listen. when you got to pay rent and bills and your phone card, it, it, that money, you know, can quickly be vacating your savings. Oh my God. Oh my God. And you know, you don't work hard to keep savings to get robbed. So let, let me be honest with you. Like, this is not everyone's situation, but when I got called out to Birmingham, I believe God called me to there. Many people have asked me, why did you go to Birmingham? God called me there. That's why I believe he called me too. And so very similar to Abraham, I was like, God, you called me to you called me to Birmingham. So why is it that now when I'm here in Birmingham, you're you're now I'm losing this job. Do you understand? I'm losing my security. Why is that, Lord? You know what I mean? I'm asking God some really, really real questions because I really believe that Abraham, and you know what? Abraham has been my guy for the last four years, blood. Like everything I do is about Abraham. Like I try, I'm, I try to, I try to see the, the, the similarities between myself and Abraham. I don't know why, but I believe that God spoke to me about Abraham about two, sorry, I said four years, last two, three years, about two, three years ago. And so from then I've been kind of just seeing in the man of faith, the man of faith, the man of faith. And so I've kind of modeled a lot of stuff like how he, how he walked with God. Right. Um, and when I say that, it doesn't mean I don't follow Jesus, please guys, some of you become religious and talk to me about, but then you have to follow Jesus. I'm, I'm following Jesus. You understand? But I'm talking about the fact that you understand certain things from reading the stories of people in the old Testament. We don't dash it away. You understand? All right, cool. So, 
I, you know, I, I saw the art of moving with Abraham. He, he, he came out of his home because he heard God's voice. He moved out of his home because he heard God's voice, right? Um, and so I was sitting, I was thinking to myself, bro, I moved out because I heard God's voice. So come on, my big man, big man, big man ting. Yeah, help me. Help, help me. Help me. Help me. You understand? You've got a box full of rejections that are real right now. Yeah, dear Kojo. Unfortunately, due to the t due to <laughs> I can't even say what the word. Unfortunately, da 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 da. Unfortunately, da da da. And there's only so much so much of rejection you can take before your heart starts breaking and asking yourself a real question: Am I really worthy? Am I really worthy? You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost like being it's almost like breaking up with a girlfriend and then getting pied by different girls when you're trying to get to know them. Do you know what I mean? Like, your heart eventually takes some L's, and when the L's are being taken, it's painful. You know what I'm saying? Your pride takes a little fall. You know what I'm saying? So, now, we I remember as well, it got to around about um, April time, April time going into May. And I was saying to God at the time, I was like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I ain't got a job. I'm trying to find a job, but I, I know you'll provide. I'm, I'm seeing different options, like, you know, different jobs and I'm applying for them. Right. And like I said, at the time, I'm at the time of uh, this, this particular thing happening, my missus was, um, you know, we were talking about it and, and she was supporting me and stuff. And I remember we had a conversation. I said, I, like, it came out after a little while. It, it, it almost had to be dragged out of me. Where I said, listen, I just feel disheartened. <clears throat> as a man, I know that, you know, my job as a uh, part of it can be providing finances, but not just that, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I've never not worked. I'm not somebody who's lazy. I'm not somebody who doesn't want to earn bread. You understand? I want to earn my daily bread. You know what I mean? That's installed in us. When you're African, that's something that you always have, work rate. So there's no way I want to be sitting at home doing nothing, right? And YouTube isn't paying me that much for me to say, hey, let me start, a, let me continue my YouTube and do it full time. So I'm not thinking about YouTube really, right? Cool. So now May comes and I said to God, okay, God, you know what? Nothing has come, you know. Every job seems to have killed off. I said to him, listen, okay, let me be frank with you, Lord. Here's my, do you know what? Maybe I've been running away from the self-assessment word that you gave me, right? Because YouTube, if you do it well enough, you'll be self-assessing. <laughs> you'll be self-assessing. So now I said to God, listen, and this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. When we talk about Gideon. So let me break down Gideon's story. Gideon in the Bible, Judges 6 and 7. When you read that story about Gideon, Gideon is saying that he is in one of the smallest tribes. I think he was in Manasseh, but a, a, a sub a sub a sublet version of Manasseh, like he's in small tribe, yeah, man's not big tribe, you understand, yeah, and so when he, when he um, is, uh, when he's confronted by this angel, the angel tells him, man of valor, and Gideon's like, brother, listen, do you know who I am, listen, brother, I think you got the wrong guy, you know, you got the wrong number, but the angel says, listen, man of valor, I've been seeing what you've been doing, Okay, see, Gideon thought that because his little thing of hiding stuff in the wine press or the threshold where he were, whatever he was doing or whatever, right, wasn't a big deal. But the Lord had seen it as potential. You see, God sees potential differently to how human beings see potential. Y'all even know in my channel, I've talked about you guys, don't marry potential. You understand? But God sees something completely different because he knows the beginning from the end. You understand? From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. I just wanted to just wanted to show you my vocal skills, really. Um, but you know, from the beginning to the end, he knows he knows the jump, right? Cool. So now, um, Gideon is there talking to this angel, and and the angel saying to him, "Listen, you will be this X, Y, and Z." Now Gideon's like, "All right, cool. If that's what if you're really saying that, I don't believe you. But if that's what you're saying, all right, cool." Let me test it. Lord, if this is really you, let's test it. Okay. He said, listen, let me put this fleece on the ground. Yeah. And if it be you. Yeah. If it be you, then what I will do is then the ground should go dry and the fleece should go wet. Yeah. So he goes away, comes out the next, the next day and realizes the ground is wet. Okay. Oh, sorry. The ground is dry and the fleece is wet. And then he does this. He asks, he asks for us just to make sure God is the one that's doing it. And it's not a fluke. Listen, brother, do the reverse. <laughs> do the reverse. Let there be dew. Let the dew of heaven ring up. I don't know. <clears throat> that note was off. Anyway, and I don't know what the rest of the lyrics. Anyway, so um, so then he comes out and he sees it again. That, yes, the dew is on the ground and the fleece is dry or the fleece is wet, whichever way you want to call it, whatever way around or whatever, right? And he realizes at that point, oh my God, 
It's God speaking. Oh my God. It's God speaking. Oh my God. Right? He had he needed a sign to able to know definitely it was God. So whenever I, I read that scripture, whenever I'm doing certain things, I will ask for a sign. There's nothing wrong with asking a sign. I need to make sure it's God that's doing it. Do you understand? And I ask for a sign so that and when I see the sign, then I move. Because once I've asked for it, I'm not about to say, okay, listen, Lord, I need okay. You know what I mean? Like I, I ask for the sign and I move. So when I was when I was there, I said, God, you know what? I've been avoiding talking about YouTube to you because I felt like it was a hobby and a side thing. I didn't think I had enough. I didn't think I had enough to do full time because I didn't feel like I was there just yet. You know, at the time I had what seventeen k subscribers or whatever. You know, even even less than that, sixteen k I think at that time or whatever, or how much whatever. I don't know how much I had, right? So I'm thinking to myself, I don't really think I'm going to be able to do a, a YouTube full time and get paid where I need to get paid. OK, cool. So now I said to him, listen, but here, here's my thing, Lord. I'm willing to bargain with you. You know me when I started this YouTube. And that's another thing as well. When I started YouTube at the time in August 2015, I said to him, you have to understand, look, everything I do and everything you should do should be about God. Like God should not be added. He should be infused. Let me make it down for you again. He should not be added. He should be infused. Why? Because he's part of my DNA. Therefore, I cannot, I cannot add him separately. You understand? I, I do everything with Jesus in mind. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, cool. So now when I started YouTube, I said to him, God, I don't want to start it and not finish, number one. And number two, I'm willing to wait if it takes a little bit longer than most people to do this thing. If it is your will. And I don't know how what I what signal I got, but I think my first video hit a thousand, and I said, "Okay, God, I'll start that." Right. So when obviously now I've come to May two thousand and twenty, I said to God, "If I earn a thousand pounds on YouTube, that will be my qualification to know that God, you have spoken to go down this route, and irrespective of what anybody says." I don't care who you are, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, I will cancel you before I let God's word fall flat with me. You understand? And I need you to be understanding of this. Nobody, okay, can out talk the God that I live, that I, that I live with. Nobody should be able to, 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 to cause me to doubt, okay, what I believe God has said to me. If I feel God has said it to me, I don't care who you are. And if you try to disconnect what God has said to me, I will make sure that you are exited. It's that simple. Because when it comes to God and you, you have not been there all day of my life. All the days of my life, I want to gaze upon your beauty. You understand? I do not play with God. When he tells me something, it's done. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't play with you. Yeah? Yeah, I can't play with you. So now... May came and I earned, I earned 953 or 990 pounds or something like that. I can't remember exactly. It was under a thousand pounds, right? And when it happened, I've never earned that kind of money. The most I've ever earned, I think, was 250. I'd never earned close to a thousand pounds before. I've never even seen that. Kind of, I've not even sniffed that kind of finances before. You understand? I've not even sniffed that kind. Of, I've not even sniffed that kind of finances before. Never have I seen it on YouTube. Never have I ever. You understand? So I and and the funny thing was the video that even got me the money was actually a, a live that was done by um, America's top next next top model, whatever, right? Yeah, I never expected it to go viral like that, and 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 for it to gain that much finances from it, I didn't know. And in, in fact, do you know the funny thing was, and I, maybe I'll talk about this in another video later on down the line. I actually got a copyright strike for that video, and then I knew God is saying the time has passed, the season has passed. Don't. Don't don't copy any more lives onto your thing. Create new content. Yeah? I just knew that God was telling me that. All right, cool. So now when May came and I, and I hit that 990, I said to myself, this is the path to take. Told my missus as well. And she wasn't really, she wasn't, and I understand. At the time, the missus at the time was a little bit concerned by that. It's like, you don't earn enough. And she's actually right. I don't. But I had to tell her, listen, I believe God has told me before. And here's the thing. Similar to Abraham and Sarah, you need to listen as you are Abraham in your relationship with God. Yeah, the Sarah's in your life. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they say. Let me say it again for you. When you are the Abraham in your relationship with God, this is not this is either man or woman. Your relationship with God, you are the Abraham. You're the friend of God. No, Sarah can tell you anything. 
I want you to understand this. Because when she said, oh, I don't know. I said, mm, mm, mm. listen, God said it. God said it. I, 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 that's what God told me. And I will do what God told me to do. Right. Um, and we had several conversations about this. I was still trying to apply for jobs in the meantime. So listen, let me let me compromise with you. I will still apply for jobs. You understand? If something comes, I'll go with it. If it doesn't, I'm a stick to this YouTube. Right. And I applied for several jobs and nothing was coming, bruh. Yeah. Nothing was coming, bruh. Qualified and I couldn't get it, bruh. You understand? And so a turning point hit, I think it ran about August, September time. I earned over a thousand pounds finally. Yeah, and, and since then it's been increasing. We're, we're almost five times that now. You understand? Yeah, we'll do that in another video. But I, and, and even then, I even said as well, December time, okay, December time, if I earn even £2,000, Lord, this will be my guarantee by the end of the year that in 2021, there's no other conversation. You understand, right? Because I still wanted to, I almost wanted to still give myself a little backup. Maybe... Maybe it's a fluke, you know what I mean, right? Even me, sometimes you think about it. Sometimes you're a little bit scared and sometimes you do think to yourself, maybe I should go back on it. But that May conversation was quintessential because it established that once I said it, once once God had shown me, I had to go with it. You know what I'm saying? And so now I stand here, it's January 2021, and I'm saying to you, okay, there is a reason why the job had to be exited. Look, so I make more money doing YouTube than I did at my job. And it's not, it's, this is not a boast about money. It's not about the money. It's about what God has done. Do you understand what I'm saying? What God has done is that he answered the prayer, but not in the way that I thought he would answer it. When I was asking, like, God, I need more money. Like, I need, I need you to, to, to take me to the next level. Yeah, I was thinking he would uh, supply another job. Because, you see, I had a train of thought. And many of you are looking for God to work in the boxes that we put him in. And the boxes are... Are, are, are built by the words that have been spoken to us in our lives and the boxes are built by the image that we believe that God should fit but the God that we serve does not fit the box that I have for him in fact he created the box but he's outside the box therefore I can't even outthink him because I'm still inside the box <laughs> uh, do you know what I'm saying so when I was I was thinking that God would supply in a certain way but I want to hear to let you know God doesn't need to supply it in the way that you like it to be supplied he doesn't need to he can supply it in a way that is unusual to you and to me because his ways are not my ways so your job here is to tap into God because you know when the Bible says about Ephesians 6, here's a battle and I'm going to close it on this because God knows exactly how to get you from A to B. But in between A and B, the journey, remember Abraham was meant to go to, the, the city he was meant to go to, on the way he actually stopped in Egypt. He didn't have to, but he stopped in Egypt, yeah? Cool. Now, on, on, on your journey to B, OK, the devil has a job to do. You see, the Bible tells us that God never tempts us. He might test, but he doesn't tempt. OK, now the devil's job here is to try and tempt you. But guess what the Bible says? Whenever there is temptation, there is you're never tempted beyond what you can handle, which means the God that you serve knows how much you can handle and only allows you to only allows you to encounter what you can handle. And that's and that's painful because some of you are really handling some really difficult situations. Some of you have lost parents. Some of you have lost friends. Some of you have lost. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking about real stuff like my job loss. It's not a life loss. Do you understand? Some of you are facing some real stuff and you're asking that question. Well, I, I, how can God say I can handle this? I don't know how he can say that. But the God that I serve, he knows you best. So go and have that conversation with him because only he can tell you the answer. Right now. And even in suffering, understand that while you suffered, Christ has suffered the more. He has died for people that don't even like him. I don't know about you guys, but when someone dies for someone he doesn't even like, for someone who doesn't even like them, it's a different story. But anyway, that's another conversation. Talking from A to B, right? The devil has a job to tempt you, okay, away from the path that God has told you to go for. He has a, he's trying to tempt you with different thoughts, with doubt. He wants to, did you really hear God? Did you really hear God? Did God really say that? Doing what he did to Eve. Did you really say that? And many of you are cussing Eve. You are the Eve. Or if you don't know, you are the Eve. Abi, you are the one that's speaking to the snake right now. When you listen to those thoughts, when you hear those voices, when you hear those distractions from people and you start considering it, that is the Eve with the snake. Don't bash Eve because you're one of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So 
in, in that journey from A to B where God wants to get you to, your job is to supplant your ear to hear what God is saying to you to get you to place B. For me, it was to get to the path of doing YouTube full time. And the next journey starts again. For you, I don't know what it is. But if you've lost your job, let me encourage you. There's a reason. Some of you, you don't turn up on time. That's why you got fired. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm only kidding. But there is a reason why you are in where you are right now. And oftentimes, it isn't because of what you did. Oftentimes, it's about what God is about to do. I'm not here to sit down and promise you God is about to bring you a, a fantabulous new job. I'm here to tell you there is a journey to take. What has God said to you? If you are in a season and you don't know what God has said, I would advise you with absolute humility to go and find out what has God said in the season. What is the word? Because there is always a word for that particular season. The season after I started YouTube, the word was focus. Kojo, focus. Kojo, focus. Kwajo, focus. And so that was my key word for that season. Focus. That unlocked certain doors for me. What has God said to you? That's your job to find out. So guys, war is war. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory in Christ alone. Yes, we give him all the glory. War is war. And my commander, my chief, and my captain is Jesus Christ, who I follow into battle. Guys, I show no, no mercy. I show no consideration, no love for my enemy. I appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Appreciate you.